Welcome back, Canaanites. Before we jump into the community update, I want to apologize for my absence as of late. Just a lot going on in real life that's been eating up my time, but I'm adjusting and we should be back on track real soon. So, now let's dive into the update. This week opens with a very special announcement, a new comic anthology titled Halo The Rise of Atriox. Atriox's backstory is briefly touched on in Halo Wars 2 in a cutscene and later in various Phoenix Log entries. Now we'll be getting five issues from various authors and artists, including Cullen Bunn, Jody Hoser, John Jackson Miller, Alex Irvine, Claire Rowe, Wilson Gonzalez, Jonathan Wayshack, and Tristan Jones. John Jackson Miller, Alex Irvine, and Jonathan Wayshack all previously worked on Halo Tales from Slipspace, contributing to Undefeated, Something Has Happened, and On the Brink, respectively. The first two stories were fairly well received, and while On the Brink wasn't, the art was undeniably beautiful, and Wayshack was the artist on that one. I'd recommend looking up some of these artists and writers. From what I've seen in quick Google searches, the comic series is likely going to be beautiful, if nothing else. On screen now, you can see the cover for issue number one, by Alexi Bricklot. The first issue, by Cullen Bunn and drawn by Claire Rose, begins when Atriox was still part of the Covenant and detailing the suicide missions that would eventually forge him into the leader we know in Halo Wars 2. I do hope that the comic either ends before or right as Atriox is about to be banished, rather than wasting any pages retelling the Halo Wars 2 cutscene at any point. Issue number one of Rise of Atriox goes on sale August 2nd, 2017, and you can bet I will be covering each issue as they release just like I did with Escalation back in the day. The next major piece of news concerns Halo Warfleet. Earlier this week, the finished cover art found its way onto Italian Amazon and people were left pretty hyped. In case you forgot or never knew, Halo Warfleet is the next Halo guide of sorts, containing 10 detailed cross-sections of ships from the Halo universe, plus other pieces of secondary art. The book will be divided into five sections, intro slash technical architecture, human ships, covey ships, forerunner ships, and an expansive glossary. In addition, the internal 343 writing team crafted the accompanying text themselves, led by franchise writer Kenneth Peters. Basically, it's the same setup as Halo Mythos, just focusing on ships rather than the overarching story. So, to say that I am hyped is an understatement. As noted back when this was announced, this is something myself and many others have been wanting for years, and to top it off today, Grim gifted us with the full cover art showing the UNSC Toulouse, a Halcyon-class light cruiser, facing off against some CCS-class battlecruisers. As some of the more lore-savvy among you likely guessed, or even saw, this cover art, as badass as it is, sparked quite a bit of debate among Halo fans. In Halo The Flood, it was expressly stated that Halcyons were assembled in space and weren't meant to, and generally couldn't, operate in atmosphere like we see frigates doing in most Halo games. Now yes, you have Halo Reach showing the Pillar of Autumn operating in Atmo, but even then, it's got extremely limited operational ability and it required rocket boosters to take off and presumably before that, land. One could argue that normal Halcyons like Toulouse, lacking the heavy upgrades of the Autumn, could operate to a limited degree, but as Grimm puts it, sometimes it's just badass art. Still, I would have much rather had something canonically accurate than something badass, just saying. What's really interesting, however, is that we finally get confirmation on how UNSC ships operate in atmosphere at all. For years, it's been a mystery how UNSC ships, and hell, just about any ship from any faction or race, seem to operate in atmosphere while lacking any of the necessary thrusters. They just seem to float there. Well, as it turns out, artificial gravity, the prominent theory in the lore community, is the answer. Maneuvering options were often limited, and the systems used during the Covenant War were, quote, crude and power-hungry, often not well-suited to larger ships, but hey, we now have a proper answer. And that does it for this week's community update. There's obviously a lot more to the actual article, including a spotlight on 343's Mark Yelverton, their franchise business manager. It's a good read that lets fans get a look at the inner workings of 343 beyond just game design. But otherwise, yeah, that's pretty much it. After this video, I'll be working on the Colony Leader profile and then my review slash analysis of Halo Envoy. Spoiler alert, it's a damn good read. And after all of that is done, I'll finally be able to focus on my in-depth review of Halo Wars 2. The Phoenix logs have been updated, so now we have definitive dates for the events of Halo Wars 2, and I can cover all aspects of its story and lore. Plus, I've had a really good amount of time to really gather my thoughts, which is another reason I didn't want to rush into things. So, Halo Cannon is properly back. I hope you enjoyed this update, and thank you all for your patience. I know I technically say this at the end of every video, but that's just a recording, so... Thank you all for your support. It means the world to me, and 
I, I would have never gotten where I am now without you all. This has been Halo Cannon, and I'll see you all next time. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing, and sharing it around. You are the reason I get to keep doing this, so thank you, profusely thank you.